Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Rhonda Bearclough, and I'm the Executive Director of Align Association of Community Services, and I have the pleasure of being your host today. Align is a membership association and consists of a collection of allies, a unified community of agencies that represents the diverse needs of Alberta's children and families, many who are foster and kinship caregivers. I'm pleased to be joined by the Minister of Children and Family Services, Cyril Turton, who is announcing some exciting news for kinship, foster, and permanency caregivers across the province. We are passionate about every child's ability to thrive and the right to live in a safe and nurturing environment. At this time, I'm pleased to invite Minister Turton to the podium to tell us how the Government of Alberta is taking action on behalf of vulnerable children and youth and the people who care for them. Well, thank you so much, Rhonda, for the introduction. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered today on the traditional territory of Treaty 6, and I acknowledge the Métis people of Alberta who share a deep history with this land. And thank you again uh, to Align for hosting us here today, as well as Melissa Jones from the Alberta Foster, sorry, Alberta Foster and Kinship Association for being here as well, as we share some exciting news for Alberta's amazing foster and kinship families and the vulnerable and children and youth that they care for. So on behalf of Premier Daniel Smith and my colleagues in government, I am honoured to announce that Alberta's government is investing more than $22 million over the next three years to increase support to foster and kinship caregivers and to ensure that they can continue to provide a stable and loving home for children and youth in need of a safe place to live. Our government values the compassion, skills and training of foster and kinship parents and other caregivers and supporting those young people who may be dealing with trauma from abuse, neglect, neglect or the loss of family members. Having met with so many of these families since becoming minister almost a year ago, they truly do open up their hearts and homes. And they genu genuinely care for children who come into their lives. They take the time to ensure that their cultural, emotional, and mental needs are met and help them stay connected to their family and community. Many take on training to care for children with specialized medical needs and those individuals that are more complex. Their commitment is unwavering and their dedication is tireless and I deeply admire and respect the work they do each and every day. While foster and kitchen families may not be the traditional families, they are families nonetheless and like so many across Alberta, they are facing financial pressures and covering day-to-day -day costs like food and clothing. Foster and kinship caregivers have told us how important it is to help address the pressures so that they can focus on what they do best, providing a nurturing environment for children and help them get the connection they need and the environment where they can grow and thrive. We've listened and we're taking action. Through this investment, we are adjusting caregiver rates, including basic maintenance rates, skill fees, and the babysitting relief per diem to help make life more affordable for foster and kinship caregivers, as well as those who adopt or become private guardians of children in government care. The first adjustment has been made already, with foster, kinship, and other caregivers seeing an increase of 4.2% to caregiver rates on June 1st. This adjustment, it aligns rates with other government programs such as Alberta Child and Family Benefit, AISH, Income Support, and the Alberta Seniors Benefit and we'll be providing more details on subsequent adjustments in the future. More importantly, this will benefit almost 7,000 caregivers right across Alberta, and in turn, over 10,000 vulnerable children and youth. Now you may ask what this looks like. For a skill level two foster home with two children between the ages of nine and 11, they'll see an increase of nearly $2,000 a year through the rate adjustments. This builds and other investments for fostering kinship caregivers announced last fall. This includes investing additional monies for counseling sessions and supports, implementing a refer a foster caregiver program, and providing financial supports to young adults and their former foster caregivers when the young adult remains living with their former foster caregiver. And this support is only offered through the Transition to Adulthood program, also known as TAP. Now, while we've made progress, we also recognize more can always be done to help support caregivers. 
Later this week, I'll be attending the AFCA conference, and in coming weeks, I'll be meeting with caregivers and stakeholders right across the province to get a sense about what's working and where we can continue to enhance the foster and kinship care program. Beyond that, to anyone who may have considered becoming a foster caregiver and making a difference in the life of a child, I encourage you to learn more by calling your local Children and Family Services office. We're always looking for more foster caregivers to open their hearts and their homes to children and youth. Foster caregivers can be single, in a relationship, be empty nesters, or those in the midst of raising their families, live in a farm or a city, be in their 30s or be in their 60s. Really, the kind of people we're looking for to make a difference in the lives of vulnerable children and youth are quite simply just like you. Now, before I wrap up, I'd like to thank Align again for hosting us as well as all the foster kinship and other caregivers right across Alberta. Over the last 12 months, I've heard countless stories of children formerly in government care who talk about how you've changed the trajectory of their lives and taught them how to solve problems in healthy ways, being a listening ear and a shoulder to cry on. As Minister of Children Family Services and as a parent for two children, I cannot thank you enough for the work you do each and every day. So now I'll turn the microphone back to MC Rhonda, and thanks again for having us here today. Thank you, Minister Turton. This is such encouraging news. Recruiting and retaining foster caregiving caregivers with the skill, capacity, and motivation and resilience to provide children with what they need to thrive remains a struggle. Adequate enumeration is extremely important. And keeping up with the rising costs of supporting children in care has continually been a challenge. This announcement helps to define the cost of living and offers increased support for basic care needs such as food, energy, fuel, school. We welcome the province's $22 million investment over three years for the amazing people who choose to care for children, youth, and their families. Despite best efforts to keep families together, we know that a child's home is not always safe. And when that happens, it's often foster, kinship, or other caregivers who provide that environment. It's wonderful to hear that so many Albertans have shared stories about caregivers who have changed lives for the better. This investment by Alberta's government also recognizes the incredible skill, energy, and dedication it takes to be a successful caregiver. It's challenging work. It's critical that they are well supported. I now invite my colleague, Melissa Jones, the Chief Executive Officer of Alberta Foster and Kinship Association to say a few words. Thank you, Rhonda. Good morning. On behalf of the Alberta Foster and Kinship Association, it's an honor to be here with all of you. This is an important day for foster and kinship caregivers have been waiting for, one of recognition, for the importance they play in the lives of children and youth in their care. I always appreciate the opportunity to support the sharing of good news to Alberta's compassionate, hardworking caregivers, who have, for many years, been asking for more support so they can continue to give kids their best. I'm thankful Alberta, Alberta's government is listening and taking meaningful action to help caregivers keep up with the day-to-day -day costs of caring for vulnerable children and youth. My work with AFCA and my own experiences growing up with foster siblings have taught me that welcoming a child into your home is both rewarding and demanding. Caregivers choose this path because they wholeheartedly believe no child in crisis should ever be without a warm, secure, and loving place to go. It's a complex commitment that comes with great joy and one that also comes with challenges and sometimes doubt. During this time, when many families are struggling with a significant increase to the cost of living in general, creating challenges in buying groceries and paying the bills as a couple of examples, it's more important than ever to find ways to intentionally empower and support caregivers and guardians, whose positive, stable presence in a child's life can make all the difference in the world. At AFCA, we celebrate you. For all you do for the children and youth you care for, for the lives you enrich, for your strength and selflessness. We thank you. Thank you, Minister Turton, for providing this opportunity to speak.
Those foster care agencies that are part of the Align community are appreciative of this support and its continued recognition moving forward that costs are escalating and caregivers require that support ongoing to, do, to continue to do the best job possible. I'd like to close by thanking Minister Turton once again for his kind words, recognizing the enormous value of foster, kinship, and permanency caregivers, and to say thank you to everyone who has joined us today to celebrate this um, announcement. Thank you. All right, we will now open things up for a Q&A with media. If any media in the room can line up on at this mic over here. Um, and we'll start with questions on the line this time. If you could please state your name and outlet and who you're directing your question at, that would be awesome. Operator, please put through the first caller. Janet French, CBC. Good morning. Um, I'll start with Melissa. When was the last time that support rates for kinship and foster parents went up, and how far does this particular increase go into offsetting the kind of inflation we've seen during the last few years? Hi, so it was approximately 2012, I think, when we saw the most significant increase for caregivers. And um, I believe that this will be um, a good starting point for helping to address some of the extra expenses and costs that caregivers are facing right now with having to support the children that are in their care. Um, so we do thank the ministry for the, um, the extra <laughs> that they're providing at this time. So. Did you have a follow-up? Okay, um, and yeah, for Minister Turton, I'm aware that there's this foster family recruitment campaign going on right now. How many more foster families have you recruited, and what are some of the challenges that you're experiencing with trying to get people to serve as foster or kinship families? Yeah, no, great question. So uh, we're still in the uh, early stages of that program. I, I know from uh, talking with the department um, the trend lines are promising in terms of stabilizing the system with the number of foster caregivers uh, that are entering the system, but we're going to have more information about how that campaign is going. Uh, I do know from conversations that I've had with foster caregivers uh, over the last 12 months as the minister that the, um, the daily rates has been easily one of the largest concerns that I have heard uh, from foster care parents as well as prospective foster caregivers as well. So I know the announcement today is going to be um, uh, seen as a, an immense positive for so many caregivers across the province that are opening up their hearts in their homes. And as Melissa said, I look forward to the ongoing conversation about additional ways uh, that we can help support these amazing foster caregivers and helping them support uh, a lot of vulnerable and complex children right across the province. Operator, are there any other callers on the line? There are no other questions in the queue at this time. Are there any other questions in the room? Seeing none, that concludes our press conference today. Thank you, everyone.